is very much in for well, it's up for grabs, basically. Jeffrey Hurlings is there at the moment on 391 points, but 10 points behind him, Joel Roulant and Zach Osborne. They're both tied at the moment, so anywhere inside the top 10, and those two will overhaul Hurlings. But uh, which one of those two riders will take fourth or fifth? We've also got Arnold Tonus currently in seventh place in the championship. He could also overtake Jeffrey Hurlings, but needs to finish third at least to... Uh, take that position away but he also has to concentrate on the two riders ahead of him Joel Roulant and Zach Osborne he's nine points behind those two riders as we've already said the MX2 riders are down there on the grid I'm joined by the well the successful defending uh, women's world champion uh, Steffi Lyre Steffi uh, a mixed weekend this weekend huh? you went out yesterday uh, scored a, a pretty good victory to claim that championship but it was uh, a long and interesting day for you as well wasn't it with, with, with a big crash yeah, it was an awesome day yesterday because um, I had a big crash with the other rider and it wasn't my fault, so I went to the hospital and uh, I decided to race yesterday because I really wanted to race and want to win the world title again because I was so excited to race on that awesome track. But today I decided to don't, don't ride because uh, I had really much pain in my shoulder this morning and headache and it's better like this because I want to ride some more championship uh, in the end of this year. Yeah, also you're doing the Dutch and the German Championship as well, so uh, obviously leading those, I would think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But uh, did you miss not being out there in that first race with the conditions of where they were, hard and slick? Is that what you prefer? Yeah, I prefer that because the track is really technical and I really like the track because it's an awesome track and yeah, I missed that, but I like the first race, so it's, it's good enough. <laughs> okay. The final MX2 race of the 2010 season gets underway and once again Marvin Muscan comes across Ken Roxon going into turn one and this time he looks to have held on to that advantage although Roxon and uh, Goche Paulan along each other alongside each other Lupino gets a good start as well number 77 as they head under the Red Bull finish line jump for the first time oh, tell you what very close and a lot of hang time there for the riders we've got a lot of dry patches out on the track so it's going to be very hard slick and slippery indeed but we've also got a lot of ray, uh, water go down as well so it's going to be slippery in uh, another sense of the word as they head downhill for the first time it's Marvin Muscan who uh, is our early race leader from Roxon who again just like in moto number one has already worked himself into second position Paul and his third the first of the CLS Karasakis Van Horbeek is fourth Lupino fifth uh, Kulas, that looks like, in sixth position. And then Zach Osborne around the outside of Joel Roulant, who he is in direct conflict with in that battle for potentially fourth place in... Oh, and uh, the CLS Kawasaki rider of Van, Van, Van Horbeek goes down. And that just goes to show the watering on the circuit not playing into the hands of uh, Van Horbeek. A big crash there, Steffi, for uh, Jeremy. Yeah, it was also the same yesterday in our race. They, they watered a lot in that corner, and that's very slippery up again, um, uh, after that uh, wave section. And you see, just the front tire slip away, and it crashed. Yeah, it just lands, and then that was it. He lost his leg as well, and uh, both wheels went away from him. And uh, he headbutted the ground pretty good there, but uh, fortunately he was able to pick himself up. But first lap, he's right the way back in the, uh, at the pack now, and he's got a lot of work to do. So for him... Any chance of uh, possibly going with Osborne, Roulots and Simpson and maybe even Tonus for a shot at fourth, certainly fifth in the championship, are uh, pretty much down and out for Jeremy Van Horbeek. See the riders going wide here in this bottom corner on the approach to the double jump underneath the Tekka Bridge. We've got yellow flags down the background over there, so somebody obviously gone down possibly into that next right-hander. But... Um, the early stages of this second moto, very good, uh, the conditions very, very tricky indeed, aren't they? Yeah, at the moment I think um, it could be very interesting be between uh, Muska and uh, Roxon because they are both good riders and I think, yeah, Marvin want to win and Roxon also, but yeah, sometimes they water a little bit too much and also on the wrong section, but yeah, you can see there another crash. And there, when there is too much water, it's too slippery under the conditions. Yeah, Giacomo Del Segato, Maruni Maroni, Mattis Caro, possibly. Three of those riders hooked up in there. But uh, during the commentary, I remember in uh, race one, uh, Roxon was happy to go away at the front. It looked like Marvin Muscan was possibly content to let Ken go ahead and uh, take that victory because he knows that victory in the second race would win him the Grand Prix. And what better way for Marvin Muscan to head off to the US next year, winning his final race of the season? Yeah, for sure, it could be a perfect end for him, and I think he will pu push again now in the second heat. 
And yeah, when you win now, you have the victory, and then you can go to USA and head free and just relax the winter and then see what happened in USA. Yeah, he said also that he was riding the new fuel injected 2011 bike, but uh, oh, Osborne down the inside of. Uh, is that one of theirs? Charlie, I think, possibly. Um, oh, Lupino. Sorry. But uh, he's riding the, the uh, fuel injected bike this weekend. Marvin Muscan, have you ridden that bike? Do you know what it's like yet? No, not yet. I'm also not sure if I ride that bike next year because I'm not sure what we ride next year. And uh, I hope I can get a new bike in the end of this year and try how it is. And But I'm I'm looking forward to this bike because everybody says it's, it's a good bike. And I think, um, yeah, it will be great to ride. OK, well, back with the action. Uh, just over half an hour to go. Marvin Muscan, he's... Uh, oh, there's Van Holbeek's bike. And... Uh, He's a little bit battered and bruised, so that's not the way he wanted to finish the 2010 season for Kawasaki CLS. Marvin Muscan, though, has a two and a half second advantage over Ken Roxon. Gorlan is third, Lupino fourth, Osborne is fifth, Frossard sixth, Tonus seventh, Kulas eight. Rulots nine, and Jake Nichols is in tenth position. So Arnold Tonus, Zach Osborne, and uh, Joel Rulots, they're the three guys that are chasing that fourth and fifth position in the championship. But uh, still a long way to go in a circuit that is starting to dry out due to the pretty heavy watering they've done, they've had to do to keep the dust down in uh, the early stages of the second moto. There's Osborne going through. He's in fourth position. That's Lupino in fifth, number 77. Then we have uh, the CLS Kawasaki Frossard in sixth place. Tonus there in yellow is in seventh. And Rulots is just behind them in eighth on the Nastan Gem Racing KTM. But uh, in the first moto, it uh, was um, a difficult moto for... Joel Rulons finishing in, uh, where was Rulons in the first race? In sixth position, but uh, not really going with the, with the rest of the riders ahead of him. But uh, he did enough to keep himself in the hunt anyway for that uh, the, the final championship classification. Oh, nice line there for Arnold Tonus. It's a pity that um, Van Horby couldn't use that line on the first lap. But obviously he was in a battle with uh, the rest of the riders going through there. And obviously just got it wrong, was unlucky, um, was sent sprawling to the deck. But Tonus looking good here as he chases down the 183 Kawasaki of Stephen Frossard. Uh, Steffi, how was the track actually for you when you raced, rode it yesterday? Uh, yesterday the track was actually perfect. I really like that track. It's so technical and I like that kind of tracks and it was not too muddy. Okay, uh, after uh, we saw the crash of Van back after the, the wave section, they also watered a lot yesterday. And, but the track was actually really good and I think the conditions now are also not so bad and it's funny to ride the track. Talking to one or two people, saying they're not actually used to the ground being that hard. You know, that's kind of like welcome to old school, isn't it? It's an old school venue, not been raced since 1989. They've only ever had three Grand Prix here anyway. Um, but I guess that's the difference between riding a venue like this and the circuits that um, I guess are able to be rotivated the whole time just so that you can keep the moisture in the ground and uh, that aren't as slick. But uh, anyway, Pitboard goes out to Lupino having. Uh, well, not his best ride of the season so far because Lupino took a third in the second moto in Belpooch, Catalonia, back in May. So uh, he's been in the at the front end of the MX2 race this year so far, but uh, not been anywhere close since then. And he's going to have a, a tough job of keeping Stephen Frossard directly behind him. Um, MX3, uh, MX Women's next year, Steffi, probably not going to be running seven rounds with the MX1, MX2 guys. Um, how do you feel about that? Uh, possibly going to be running maybe two or three or four, we don't know yet, alongside the MX1, MX2 guys. Um, does that change how you look at the season for 2011? Yeah, I don't actually know what I think about it because it's really hard that, that we change to MX3 because um, I really like to ride beside the MX1 and MX2 guys. And we will see how it, how it will change next year because at the moment I cannot really say anything because um, the sponsor are waiting for the for the 100% schedule. I'm waiting for the for the schedule and we will see what, what happens next year. And uh, for sure I like to ride in the World Championship but um, I cannot say anything at the moment because... Yeah, well, we have to see what, what will happen. OK, fair comment. I won't press you any further. But Marvin Muscan back up front with uh, just over 27 minutes to go. Looks to be in control of this one at the moment. He's opened up a 3.7 second advantage over Ken Roxon as he comes under the Tekka Bridge over the uphill double, working his way back towards the end of what will be lap four in his second MX2 moto. Doubling his way just over the staircase up towards turn one and then double, triple over the waves at 
immediately lead out of turn one. And that gap, uh, 1.8, so visibly coming down. So Marvin Muscan perhaps maybe not in such control as we thought just a moment ago. So Ken Roxon has either just settled down, found his rhythm, and suddenly got to grips with uh, what was a slippery circuit. And maybe the circuit is coming back to uh, Ken Roxon. Because uh, you find that sometimes, don't you? Um, I've seen it before with riders. They just take it a little bit easy when conditions are a little bit unpredictable. And then after three or four laps, when things have settled down, they say, OK, now I'm ready to go. Yeah, I think it's normal because uh, all the riders or the most of the riders are looking the first two laps how the track is and how the conditions will change because I think in, in their case for the 35 minutes they don't need to push the first two laps just ride with the with the guys with the riders and then start to push after the second lap because I think that's enough because when you when you risk everything in the first two laps then it can be over. Well, 1.5, 1.8, sorry, separated the two riders, our two leaders, Muscan and Roxon, those two riders in shot as they came over the line. And it was a 156.04, Muscan, 154, fastest lap of the race so far, four laps in. Four, Ken Roxon as he doubles his way down the little step down. Gauthier Paul and 11 seconds further back in third place from Zach Osborne in fourth. That will be good enough for fourth place in the championship for the bike at Cosworth Yamaha rider because uh, anything above... 10th uh, place for him will secure, will make sure that he overtakes Jeffrey Hurlings in the championship. His nearest challenger, Joel Rulant, who is currently tied on points with, is uh, four places further back as Roxon is eaten away at the lead that Marvin Muscan has as we come towards the end of lap five. And he goes to the inside here, gets the power down. A nice line there from Roxon. And he doubles his way up onto the staircase there. Both riders not quite getting over that completely in uh, cleanly. But uh, Roxon, look at him, getting the drive around the outside of the KTM rider. It's going to be double whips for both riders as they head over the finish line jump. But Roxon can go around the outside. Muscan decides to go defensive to the inside. Will that affect what happens up and over this wave section? Not really, but uh, suddenly Roxon doubling his way through that final combination and gets good drive, jumps big alongside Muscat down the hill and continues that momentum, momentum around the outside and makes the pass and can he pull it off? Well, look at that, Muscat on the brakes, checks Roxon down the inside and Roxon's going to have to wait just a little longer, possibly. Marvin Muscat certainly knows that the German is there, though, trying to challenge for this, this lead. Whoever wins the moto wins the Grand Prix and they will get the bragging rights to say that they won the final Grand Prix of the season. That's what we all remember. Of course, we'll remember Marvin Muscat winning his second world title uh, one week ago in Lerop as well. But these two, the, their handcuffs are off, if you like. The pressure is off. They've already decided their first and second position in the championship. Championship. This one is for personal pride, and uh, wow, we've got 24 minutes of this. It's uh, pretty exciting, isn't it? A, a great way to finish the, the second MX2 race of the year. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, Ken would like to improve on the last time that he's there, and he is ready for the title, and he really want to to be world champion next year. And yeah, he improved so many times, and I think it's going to be very interesting next year. Look at that, just keeps it nice and low. Muscan knows he's there though, but he has the advantage going up the inside. He just decides, okay, if you go, I'm going to go. If you stop, I'm going to stop. And he absolutely makes certain that Roxon is not going to come around the outside of him and also that he can't square back behind him as well just to uh, retake that lead. But Marvin Muscan leads with 23 minutes to go. Marvin Muscan then. That was a bit of a wake-up call for him that previous lap because he's opened up. It was only two tenths of a second as they came over the line, but already you can see it's maybe just over a second, something like that. Marvin Muscan sets the fastest lap of the race, 154-0 compared to the 55-7, so almost two seconds between Muscan and Roxon. Paulan uh, weighs back in third place. Uh, Frostard now fourth, Osborne fifth. So Osborne losing a position that time around to the French CLS Kawasaki rider Lupino having a great ride in sixth. Tona seven, Roulant's eight, Lieb another top ten ride for him at the moment in ninth. And Jake Nichols hanging on in there at tenth, just ahead of Charlier, but uh, that will only be good enough for 13th overall in the championship as that situation stands. Harry Kulas a little bit off form today. Uh, he's down in twelfth position from Verbruggen, Nikolai Larson, Denny Philipparts in well inside the points in fifteenth. Glenn Koldenhoff, Sean Simpson down in seventeenth. Just uh, spoke to his brother, his mechanic, uh, at the end of the first race and just said, just admitted he wasn't riding good. So uh, a lot of riders actually not feeling at one with the circuit, saying the difficult conditions, they don't feel relaxed on the bike. And um, it's quite strange that, isn't it? Or is that normal with these conditions, Steffi? Uh, in fact, we'll get back to the moment. We're uh, going to go down a pit lane. 
there's a battle at the moment between Marvin and Ken. Do you think Marvin's going to push really hard so Ken doesn't catch him? I know it's the last round and he's already champion. Yes, of course, because the championship is over, so both of them are riding just for this only yeah. one beat victory. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And this is nice for the crowds and nice for us to see who is really on the tougher one. Well, we'll see. Thank you. Oh, 1.9 seconds separated the two riders. They came over the line. It's uh, visibly being reduced, that gap. And again, Ken Roxon has a really nice line through there, doesn't he? Just turning off nice and easy, going with the dirt, not using the uh, banking. And again, getting over that staircase, pretty good as well. But uh, he's definitely in pursuit of Marvin Muscant. And as we said a moment ago, this one about pride. Zach Osborne there in red, still trying to fend off. Uh, Lupino and also Arnold Tonus closing in as well. He's uh, nine points behind Zach Osborne. But uh, the man that Osborne needs to be careful of is uh, the guy behind Arnold Tonus. The other rider in red on the jam racing KTM is just there coming over the brow of the hill. And that is uh, Joel Roulant. This time it's check time for uh, Roxon. But Marvin Muscan just survives an attempted pass there. But look at this. Roxon has to go high and wide just to stay out of the way of Marvin Muscan, who takes an inside rut. And this time Roxon does go through around the outside. And this time he makes the pass stick. So uh, some great riding there from Ken Roxon. Yeah, and that was a really nice line. Catching Marvin Muscan quite by surprise there as well, I think. Yeah, I think uh, Marvin was not coming, coming to see um, Roxon, but... Yeah, I think Roxon want to improve now at the last time and then ready for the world title next year. So also put it down the fastest lap at the moment. Yeah, 53.3 and that was 54-0 uh, for uh, Marvin Muscan. So uh, a good lap for Ken Roxon. He whittled down that two second advantage considerably just in that sort of what, lap and a half, two laps. And uh, once again, Ken Roxon back in control, just like he was in moto number one. The big question now though, Marvin Muscan. What's the response going to be? Is he bothered that he doesn't win the final Grand Prix of the season? Is he, not, is he bothered that he doesn't win the final race of the season? At the moment, maybe he's happy for Roxon just to lead for the next, what, 20 minutes or so? Uh, maybe even 15 minutes and then maybe go for it the last couple of three laps, something like that. So maybe we're in for a, a spectacular showdown with, uh, you know, in the final, what, 10 minutes, something like that. That'll be nice. Quite a bit of a mistake there from Roxon. Just lost his legs. He came over the first brow. But hanging off the back of that Tech Year of Suzuki under the Red Bull finish line jump, the gap between these two guys just eight tenths of a second. We can see that without needing the monitor. Paulan still not over the line yet in third position. Frossard still in fourth. I wonder what the gap between those two guys is. Uh, probably around about two seconds, something like that, the last time around, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. It's Frossard, Lupino, Tonus, though, that we need to uh, keep an eye on as well. This battle here between Marvin Muscan and Ken Roxon, our two race leaders, that is to decide the overall winner of the Grand Prix. There's uh, Paul and there's Frossard. So that gap, absolutely nothing in it between those two guys either. So the battle of the Frenchman in third and fourth, Monster Energy Yamaha versus CLS Kawasaki. Osborne is about six seconds behind Frossard in fifth. Tonus, two seconds further back. So uh, Lupino has been overtaken by the Tech Europe Suzuki rider of Arnold Tonus. So Rulant still down in eighth position, though. So that's good for Zach Osborne. Gautier Paulan just having another steady ride here. But uh, he knows that Frossard is closing. He had a great ride in the first moto. Worked his way through traffic after falling on a first lap. So uh, this is much better from the guy who's already established himself as uh, finishing third overall in the championship. Look at the split times from Ken Roxon. Section 1, 34-4. Section 2, 35-0 uh, compared to the 34-6 and the 35-6 of um, Marvin Muscat. So uh, certainly Ken Roxon pulling the pin here and going away with it in the uh, middle part of this race. Van Horbeek, sorry, um, Frossard finishing 11th in the first moto after falling on the first lap. He came from uh, way down the order. Did Frossard. Rider down, couldn't quite see who that was, but uh, no case of mistaken identity for those two riders, Roxon and Muscan. That gap still about one second, what, 1 1.4. And another fastest lap of the race, 152.5 for Roxon this time around. So uh, Marvin Muscan knows he's got a bit of a race on here, Steffi. I think Ken is now really pushing. Really pushing. 
but uh, both riders obviously excel on this kind of ground. You don't get any shortage of uh, hard pack circuits in Germany. The French, obviously, uh, like the Italians and the Spanish, renowned for hard, slick surfaces. Uh, we're probably not surprised to see these two breaking away, are we? 23 seconds clear of Gauthier Paul and 25 seconds clear of Stephen Frossard. But uh, we're going back down the pit lane. Here we go. Jeffrey, it's great to have you here. What do you think about the last GP of the season? Unfortunately, uh, I can't race here. But, um, uh, yeah, I hope to still finish top five in the classification of the GPs. But uh, unfortunately, uh, Joel and uh, Zagri are both in the top three, uh, top ten. So it's going to be half me. Uh, we'll see how it ends. Okay, thank you. If the truth be known, uh, Hurlings is probably. Uh, Okay, yeah, he'd like to not be injured, he'd like to be riding the, the full season, but uh, compared to how hard and slick it is, Hurlings is probably thinking, actually, you know what, <laughs> I'm not too uh, disappointed about not racing this weekend. Uh, although, obviously, he would have liked to finish third in the championship, possibly second. But um, only he can answer that question, but for sure he would have missed not racing at Lear Up one week ago at his home race, where we all thought he would probably uh, possibly take a, a double moto victory. Yeah, for sure. We know that uh, when we have sand condition, that uh, Herlings is one of the men to beat. But when it's like that we have uh, now, the, the, the track we have now, then I think Roxen will be better because, uh, as we saw in Brazil, that's his style, Supergross style. He really like it, and then Ken is one of the men, one of the fastest men of the day. Martini not having a good uh, home GP. He's down and out of this one, but the battle. At the front, certainly uh, starting to intensify between Roxon and Muscan. Less than a second separated them as they came over the line. They were split by backmarker Mattis Caro. So uh, Caro out of the points in this second moto at the moment. Roxon leads from Muscan Frossard third now. Gauthier Paul and fourth. Tonus now fifth ahead of Osborne. So uh, that's okay though for Osborne because uh, Tonus about nine points behind the American. And that is that battle. Ah, oh, Paulan almost off the bike. The front end came a bit too high on him. And he lost his legs as he cased that last one. But uh, Osborne, he probably knows that uh, he's safe to let Tonus through. But at the same time, he doesn't want to let him get by the, uh, the Yamaha of Paulan, who's still tripling and casing his way up there, losing a little bit of time in the process. Be interesting to see what happens here between Tonus and Osborne because uh, they're now fifth and sixth in the race. And in the points chase, as Tonus goes after Gauthier Paulin, is he going to find a way through down here? Oh, uh, losing the front end there was Gauthier Paulin. How he stayed up on two wheels there. A big mistake, an expensive one as well in times of uh, how much it cost him time-wise. But uh, still able to hang on to that fourth position from Arnold Tonus on the Suzuki, who's now going up the inside of the Frenchman. Squares off the turn, both riders go a little bit too deep. Paulin riding defensive all of a sudden. And Frossard, he's the one that's disappeared away from there in third position and looking like he's going to be comfortable there as well to the end of the moto. But Tonus, he needs to be third in the race at least to overtake Hurlings as far as uh, points. So he needs to pass Paulin and also Frossard to get that third position. That will give him 19 points. He's 18 points behind Hurlings at the moment. So Erlings, we heard from him a moment ago, saying he would like to finish in the top five, but that's not looking likely at the moment, especially with uh, another mistake there from Paulin, especially with Tonus, Rulonx and Osborne all going for it well inside the top ten here. There's Cyril Kromov, a backmarker, as the riders reach the end of uh, their tenth lap. Eleventh uh, lap, sorry. So Paulin. Wow, look at the gap that Frossard's put as well. Seven seconds on Gauthier Paulin in the space of, what, two laps? Big leap there from Tonus, trying something different through the wave section. Osborne, uh, double, single, double through there as well, keeping these guys in check. Good news for Osborne in sixth position is Rulons is still five seconds behind him, and Tonus goes to the inside, but doesn't quite make it stick. And this time, uh, Paulan doesn't go for the triple. Now Osborne having a look back up the inside of the Swiss rider Tonus. So this is the battle for fourth position. Oh, and I tell you what, that was a brave move there from Zach Osborne. Steffi Lyra alongside me, shaking her head there in disbelief that Osborne would even think about a move like that. That was some going. That was so <laughs> close. Only, only needed a Van Horbeek moment there, and that would have just been a complete mess. <laughs> 
Osborne not afraid to let it hang out in the final 12 minutes of this final MX2 race of 2010. And Tonus, oh, I tell you what, he's going to go down hard on the inside here. No, Osborne just closing the door on him. That gives Paul and a little bit of breathing space. Osborne, though, just uh, actually the first race when he went backwards after just overtaking Tonus, uh, went and spoke to uh, Steve Dixon and uh, Zach Osborne after the moto, just prior to the riders going out for the uh, for the second moto for the sighting lap, and he just said the engine just kept dying on him, kept holding back. He couldn't get over the jumps, and it was inconsistent. One minute it'd be okay, and then the next minute it would come back in again. So they've changed the engine, I think. They've changed the electrics, and uh, certainly at the moment, no problems are. Simpson pulling out again. Still Sean Simpson, not the way he wants to finish 2000. And 10, but he's, uh, I'm led to believe, going for surgery. Oh, look how close that was between Paul and Antonis. That's when he lost the front end coming over the Red Bull triple down the bottom end of the circuit. Oh, every time you see it, nearly. Whew. But I spoke with Sean and he was really not happy to ride here because he really don't enjoy to ride here. I don't know why, because I had so much fun to ride here, but he said it's not his his track in the day. And I think probably because Sean has been spending a lot of time in Belgium, riding a lot of sand tracks and everything else, you know, you get away from that whole riding the hard, slick circuit. But, um, you know, he was very honest about it, or his brother was, said, yeah, he said he didn't feel good. He wasn't riding good, not feeling comfortable. Mel Pocock, another rider who uh, wasn't feeling good, but he's down in 20th position at the moment. Um, where's Michael Lee? Michael Lee's had a great weekend this weekend, down in ninth at the moment. And uh, first race, Lee was in seventh place, so uh, he's going to finish inside the top ten. What about Marvin Muscan, though? Is he chasing a second moto victory here? Is that Caro and Julian Lieber, 130? Maybe Cedric Lieber? Julian, uh, Cedric Lieber. But Mattis Caro, way down the order in this second moto. Whereabouts is he? Um, or is he? Oh, yeah, 25th. Giacomo Del Sicato on the Suzuki. Has to make way for Stephen Frossard, who's charging through in third position. Another fastest lap for Ken Roxon, 152.3. The gap between him and Muscat now, three and a half seconds. The battle for fourth position. Still set to go all the way to the wire. Frossard in third, Paul Ant. Osborne and Tonus. That was all three riders in the same shot there. Paul Ant, number 21. Osborne, number 338. That man on the uh, black Yamaha in the red clothing. He's going after the Frenchman, Paul Ant. He wants to take fourth place in the championship as well. And he'll take it away from Jeffrey Hurlings. But uh, been a, a dominant display. Oh, was that a mistake there from uh, Paul Ant? Didn't seem to get the drive through the middle sector there. Takes a look over his shoulder. He's immediately going to cut across the front of Osborne as they head downhill through that sweeping right hand. I was talking to Josh Coppins in the uh, first MX2 race. That was so slick through there yesterday. No lines through that right hander at all. And so uh, the good thing is we have lines there now. But Osborne not going high and wide this time. He's going to repeat the move that he uh, put on Tonus a lap ago. Does he have the... No. I was going to say, does he have the... Uh, the men's bits to go down the inside of Paulan, but Paulan not giving him the space to do so. That <sighs> slicking is down that inside. Osborne completely locked up there as he tried to go down the inside of uh, Paulan. Rossard, how far away is he? Oh, he's, he's gone. He's nine seconds clear in third position. Tonus back on the uh, rear end of Osborne. So Tonus thinks he can get a top five position uh, here, taking it from Osborne on the final, what, eight minutes plus two laps. So uh, what have we got? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 minutes, something like that. To go in the final MX2 race of 2010. Del Segato has to move out of the way there. He's a lap down. Choice of lines there for Osborne and Tonus. Tonus just about getting over that double jump under the Tekka bridge. Paul Ann seems to have uh, stabilized himself for the time being in fourth position. Still double, triple through there, getting over, no problems whatsoever. That was a tough jump to get over through there, wasn't it? Do, uh, two, three. Were you able to do that? No, I wasn't able because I wasn't concentrating on that. I was concentrating on my pains in my shoulder, so I did uh, double, double one because uh, I looked on it and it's not so easy because you have to double and then you have to push really hard to get the triple. 
as we saw Zach Osborne just trying to get over that double at the top of the wave section there. Yeah, you have to rough the bike really hard and um, not not even one girl did that, so it's also not necessary when I do it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Unlike doing the triple uh, uphill step in Portugal, Agata. <laughs> yeah, the triple I did uh, last year, I did it. And this year it wasn't possible because... Uh, oh, Muscan's out. Muscan goes down. Where's that? Uh, through the right-hand uh, plateau. So uh, just after, just before, a couple of corners before the reboot ties the tabletop. Oh. So Marvin Muscan then hands what could be a second moto victory to Ken Roxon. Looks like he kept the engine running. And there's a tough block there, but uh, doesn't look like he's going to continue this moto. Doesn't look like he wants to continue here. Frossard hasn't gone by him just yet, I don't think. Because he was about 30 seconds behind. Oh, did you hurt yourself? Yeah, that doesn't look good for Marvin Muscan. So, just like Kai Rowley, who was uh, Kai Rowley and Philip Hart's MX1, the only two riders to score points all season long in the MX2 category. Marvin Muscan could possibly be pulling out here. And that is not a good way to him, for him to finish. He's holding his hand, not sure if we will get a, a replay of the crash. But the two star riders from uh, Red Bull KTM. Just straighten the bars, he's saying to John Primo's mechanic. Is he going to go out? No. And the wrist. Clenching his hand, is it a wrist? Is he going back out? Quite possibly, yes. Right, how much time has he lost? He's got to be careful now when he pulls out of pit lane here because it's right on the point of the finish line jump. Or is he coming in? Lytle Lieb goes through. So Muscan comes over that well. He went through in seventh, but uh, Lieb already ahead of him. Marvin Muscan not pulling off. So, interesting. Yeah, he's not comfortable, is he, at all? So it's been a tough weekend for you guys. Uh, you with your shoulder, him with his hand, uh, Kairoli with his ankle. Yeah, I think it's some problems with the fingers, I think. It looks like the fingers. Maybe the, the, the dirt is, is so um, hard. hard that he uh, maybe, uh, I yeah. don't know, it looks like he had something with the fingers. Well, a shame for Marvin Muscamp, but uh, it'll be, uh, at the moment, looking like double delight uh, for Ken Roxon as he now has a 35 second advantage over Frossard, he's in charge, the plus 35 seconds is the signal from Mark from Bowland, here's Mechanic, Frossard second, Paul Ann was 10 seconds behind in third position, Paul Ann will be fourth from Tonus, but that battle was only a second apart between Osborne and Tonus, we saw those two battling uh, before we cut away to Marvin Muscan, Rulots is now there in sixth position and he's seven seconds down on Osborne, so Osborne needs to keep it up on two wheels, if he's to uh, claim fourth place in the championship. We saw Marvin Muscan go over the line just behind Michael Lee. That'll be eighth, but uh, Lupino, Nichols, Charlier, Kulas, they were all ganging up behind. So it just depends whether Marvin Muscan has enough grip in the hand, in the fingers, to be able to grip the handlebar on that uh, KTM to complete this moto. He's got three and a half left of the 2010 season. Well, it's been a great second half of the season for uh, Ken Roxon, hasn't it? Marvin Muscan did all the winning in the first half, taking, what, 13 races, 13, uh, 15 race wins in 18 races. Um, since Latvia only taken one victory, but uh, for Ken Roxon, he won the first race earlier today. He was the winner in the second moto, Lirop. He had a double win in Brazil. The first moto in the Czech Republic, the first moto in Lommel, the first moto, uh, second moto in Sweden and also took a victory in Teuschenthal, so uh, it's been a strange season like that, hasn't it? Marvin Muscan did all the hard work in the beginning of the year. Yeah, it's a little bit like me. I did all the hard work in the beginning of the year, the first three, four yeah. uh, races, and then since Teuschenthal there was a little bit bad luck. And But here in Fairmoy, it was perfect, also with that crash. But yeah, finally we did it. Marvin did it, Tony did it, I did it, so couldn't be per more, more perfect. Well, yeah, if you're going to... Uh if you're going to plan an injury or a DNF, better the last race when all the championships are decided. Now, Marvin Muscat, out of this race. Disappointment for him and his mechanic, John Primo, there in the middle. 
he cannot continue and that's going to be disappointment for our uh, two-time world champion so the possibility of taking a 15th career victory to level himself with Jean-Michel Bale, Tyler Rattray and Andrea Bartolini before he goes to the US. Uh, it's maybe the elbow. Either way, it doesn't look good. Um, well, obviously not good enough for him to continue, but uh, we don't know what the lasting effects are. How does that affect the motocross nations in two weeks' time? More importantly now for uh, Marvin Muscan, but uh, we'll have to wait and see what goes on in the press conference. Sure. Yeah, and he's not comfortable. Marvin Muscan. There's no... Oh, you had a, there's no uh, laceration. Okay, so he's been holding the top of the arm. Yeah, but when you see, he has some cramps in the hands. Maybe there's something with the elbow down to the hands. Oh, wrist, I don't know. Yeah. It would have been nice to have possibly seen a slow-mo of that because uh, help us explain a little bit. But obviously, he was uh, a few seconds away from uh, Roxon. Uh, we weren't watching that battle at all at the time. And because when you crash in that uh, condition or that hard condition, and you, you crash directly on the elbow, it yeah. can be very painful, also with the nerves on it. Yeah, and also we saw with Van Holbeek first lap, coming down through that fast-sweeping left-hander, the ground very hard. You hit the ground, you just bounce, not like Lirop one week ago, where you kind of just fall into the ground like a, like a soft duvet, if you like, you know, yeah. where it gets, you know, the, the impact gets cushioned. But, um, yeah, tough way for Marvin Muscan to finish, so that's going to hand second position in the final race of the year to... Uh, Steve Frossard with 20 seconds away from the final two lap board. Ken Roxon. Might be three laps to go, you know. What about some of the track are we? No, it's going to be uh, two laps to go, definitely for Roxon. There's Caro, just a lap down behind Gautier Paulin, who's in third position. Time is up. We wait for Roxon to come over the line. Not sure if he came over the line. Yeah, three laps still to go. So he must have gone over the line already. Gautier Paulin, uh, second half of the year for him, has actually not been too bad. Fourth in the first moto, a third and a first in Lirop. He won the Grand Prix a week ago. Had a couple of podium finishes in uh, Sweden and also in the Czech Republic. So he'll be feeling good going into 2011 as well. He'll believe that he's a, a possible challenger for Ken Roxon, I would no doubt believe. Or what do you think? Yeah, for sure, because I think he's a strong rider and he, he did a lot of work during the winter time. But uh, actually, uh, is he staying in the MX2? I, I was thinking he, he would go to the MX1. Yeah, possibly. Um, he's because a big guy. Age. He's a big guy, yeah. yeah and also his age, if he's uh, 23 already or if he's going to be 23 before the end of the season, then. Yeah, then he, he then needs he to, to change. Go. Arnold Tonus has the better of Zach Osborne in fourth position, but that won't affect the outcome for the championship for uh, Zach Osborne. He's six seconds clear of Joel Roulant, who is the direct threat for that fourth position in the championship. Muscan, already world champion, Roxon second, Frossard third. That's what the fourth is on. Osborne currently sits there at the moment. And those figures were for the overall classification in the world championship. Roulant's looking to find a way around Alex, uh, Alessandro Batig and Mattis Caro, who are in their own little battle out uh, oh, 19th and 20th position now. Frossard down the inside of the uh, Latvian, Mattis Caro. And there's Roulant's right. Let's see what's happening here. How close is he to Zach Osborne? We have number 47, Pierre Filippo Petuzzo, one of the European MX2 riders. Uh, he was a, a winner in the European MX2 uh, race earlier on in the season. Oh, i tell you what, didn't give uh, Joel Roulant's much room there as he came through to lap him. Just behind Roulant's, that was uh, Alexander Eriksson, but he's uh, a lap down. But Roulant's, he's going after Zach Osborne. And with uh, a lap, well, two laps to go, doesn't look like he's going to get the job done, barring a, a problem from the American, who's already over the final or over the finish line jump here and already into his two laps to go or penultimate lap I should say but Roxon 32 seconds clear already backing off now Frossard as we said comfortable in second can't relax too much though because Paul Ann will uh, sense Frossard backing off and he himself will uh, try and go for that second position 
As far as the uh, overall podium goes for today, there'll be no doubt about our overall winner, Roxon. 50 points for him. That'll be a win. Paul will be second. Tonos will be third overall. That'll be good for him. That'll be his first overall podium in MX2. Just edging out Stephen Frossard by two points in fourth place. Rulantz will be uh, fifth. And Osborne will be sixth. Michael Lieb, who we're looking at on screen now on the uh, Rockstar with Kawasaki, the young American. He will be seventh overall, which will be his grand best, best, best Grand Prix finish of the season. And he didn't come into the series until uh, Catalonia, Belpuch. So another rider who has been getting himself into shape and actually turning in just a couple of decent results in the final stages of the year. Um, not sure what he's doing next year, though, whether he's heading back to the US or whether he's staying in Europe for another year with the team that he's with. I know Jackie Vimon likes working with him, so maybe he'll be encouraged to stay uh, in Europe for one more year. And uh, if so, then he'll certainly be looking to capitalize on, uh, on that and uh, score top tens regular. But Ken Roxon, though, on his final lap, coasting 159.7 compared to the best lap of the race at 52.3. So uh, he knows he's just got to bring it home here and uh, him and Thomas Ramsbacker and the rest of the guys, Marcus Bauer, Teki Europe Suzuki, they will be more than pleased with the performance that he's put in, in uh, well, not just here, but uh, certainly since Udavala. Back-to-back race wins, moto number two, Udavala, moto number one in uh, Lommel. A win in the second in uh, Lockett, Czech Republic, losing out though to Marvin Muscan, who went second and first. But then since then, a double winner, Campo Grande in Brazil. Second moto winner in Lirop, and he's going to be a double moto winner here as well. So, uh, yeah, great turnaround for Roxon, but unfortunately for him, Marvin Muscan, no DNFs until the final race of the year. And this guy suffering his own disappointment in uh, Catalonia and also Lirop. So, uh, but he won't mind that. He was, uh, he's going to be victorious here today. But he's had a, he still had a great season though, hasn't he, Stefan? Yeah, I think when when you, when the bike the bike uh, didn't break, then uh, then it would be a very tough season for Marvin. So it was bad luck for Ken, and not not even in Spain and in Europe. It was also in uh, Sweden, I think. The bike also broke. Yeah. And yeah, bad luck. But I think he's one of the men. He will fight for the title next year, and I'm pretty sure that it's it's going to be not easy for the rest of them. <laughs> and he blows a kiss to the whole of the Suzuki crew there, and everybody down pit lane. Just uh, congratulating Roxon as he takes the second big whip of the day. He takes uh, his second double moto victory of the season. And he wins the Grand Prix of Italy here in Fermo. Disappointment for Marvin Muscan taking second in moto number one, DNFing after a crash in the second moto. Instead, second place going to go to uh, Stephen Frossard. Here's Lisa. She's with our winner from race Ken, two. Congratulations. Perfect round and a perfect end to the season for you, winning the last GP. Yeah, winning the last GP is awesome. I mean, it's good to finish out good so I can start good in the Supercross. And uh, I'm really happy about that and want to say thanks to my team, to my mechanic and just to everybody. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, good day for uh, Ken Roxon and a good way to finish the season also for uh, Arnold Tonus because uh, we're waiting for him to come over the line. Is he over the line now? Yes, he is. Uh, Roxon, Frossard, Paul and Tonus fourth, Osborne fifth. He will take fourth overall in the championship, but Tonus will finish uh, with a uh, third overall at the Grand Prix, his first ever overall podium finish. So it'll be a, a Teka. Oh, and Caro, has he crashed or... Is that a bike problem? <laughs>